Hello and welcome, everyone. I'm Tom Bowley, Chief Market Strategist at EarningsBeats.com, and this is Trading Places Live. It is Tuesday, March 28th, 2023, and I'm pre-recording this Trading Places Live for just a little bit later this morning. Currently, we see uh, futures are relatively flat. Uh, they were down a little bit earlier, mostly uh, lower overnight. Uh, now I'm showing slightly green. Dow futures up 20, S&P 500 futures up 1, NASDAQ futures up 5. Crude oil prices uh, right around $73 a barrel, up slightly from yesterday. And the U.S. 10-year Treasury yield up two basis points, 3.55% as it continues to march higher off of the uh, Friday low, which was down just below 3.30%. We do have the overhead 20-day moving average on that 10-year Treasury yield coming in just above 3.60. So we'll see whether or not we can clear that. Uh, but overall, looks like a pretty flat open um, across the board. We do get into a more bullish historical period starting tomorrow. Um, that's normally about the time when you get a pre-earnings run higher. Certainly no guarantee. It doesn't happen every year, but there is a tendency for it. So that's something that I would certainly be keeping an eye on. Um, let's take a look at the agenda for today before we get into everything. So we will start off with the daily market recap, then jump into talking technically, chart of the day, industry groups, Earning Spotlight, and The Three You Must See. And I'm going to go ahead and start off with that daily market recap. Uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average on Monday finished up 195 points. S&P 500 finished up six. NASDAQ was down 55, so we had bifurcated action. We've been seeing the NASDAQ leading the other major indices. Throughout much of 2023, that was not the case on Monday. I've suggested that maybe we'll see a little bit of rotation back toward value for a period of time because we have seen a lot of outperformance by the NASDAQ. Um, maybe that started yesterday. Uh, well, it did start yesterday. I'm not sure how long it lasts, uh, but at least it was something that changed uh, from what we've been uh, accustomed to. Mid caps up almost 1%, 23 points. Small caps up just over 1%, up about 11.7 points. Uh, looking at the AD lines, you can see the mid caps and small caps have seen deterioration. So in other words, uh, quite a bit of selling during the day, but not really seeing that on the Dow, S&P, and NASDAQ. S&P and NASDAQ uh, both sitting very close to 52-week uh, and all-time highs. Same goes for the Dow Jones. Um, looking at individual sectors, yesterday we saw energy, financials, industrials, materials leading. And I know on Friday, one of the things uh, we talked about in yesterday's show over at Earnings Beats was that we had a lot of defensive groups. The four defensive groups led Friday's action. And that happens periodically. It certainly happens when the market is weak. Normally on a relative basis, you will see the defensive groups do better. Um, but then when you get into strength, when the market is strong, usually defensive groups take a back seat. <clears throat> we saw a little bit of that yesterday. However, the groups that led were not technology, consumer discretionary, or communication services. It was a different flavor to the leadership, and that gets back to the value over the growth, defensive, a little bit more defensive versus the aggressive, the truly aggressive groups. Um, not performing very well yesterday, uh, but energy up a little over 2%, financials 1.4%, industrials 8 tenths of 1%, materials about 3 quarters of 1%. Note the laggard yesterday was actually one of those aggressive groups, technology, which dropped just over 3 quarters of 1%. Looking at the AD lines, you can see technology, even though we did see some weakness yesterday, that AD line set a new high recently on this strength and coming off the lows in March, you can see the volume was pretty heavy to the upside. So uh, I think overall pretty decent signs as we're heading into April. We'll see whether or not the market can continue that. Um, looking at the major indices, I think the first key is going to be on the Dow and the S&P just to get a sustained move through the 50-day moving average. The Dow, you can see yesterday came up, tried to get through the 20-day, failed, 
So for the Dow, maybe we need to get through the 21st. The S&P is above the 20-day, though, and it's trying to get through the 50-day, which currently is at 4,014. So a close, a couple of closes back above that level would certainly begin to point to the possibility or the increasing possibility of an uptrend in play. NASDAQ's already there. This is where the growth has, I was talking about, has been outperforming. You can see that here in the, <clears throat> excuse me, in the NASDAQ chart. We finished at 11,769, which is above both the 20 and the 50, and the 20 is rising above the 50. So that's the one difference, key technical difference between the NASDAQ and the other major indices that you're looking at here is that price action's above the 20 and the 20 is above the 50. It's the only one of the five major indices like that. So that's good. That's the kind of leadership we want to see. Um, perhaps we're putting in an inverse right shoulder. You can see the big move up here on the NASDAQ. Pull back, that could be a left shoulder. Move back up just above 12,000. That could be the left side of the neckline. Then you get a lower low in uh, earlier in March. That could be the head. We get all the way back up and just through 12,000 to establish the right side of the neckline. It's possible we're just moving back down into a uh, into an inverse right shoulder breakout back above this 12,000 level, and especially that early February high would be really bullish. Still got some work to do there, though. Um, the 10-year Treasury yield. Um, this is what I was talking about. We are up slightly. It's not showing on the chart here. But currently this morning, showing the 10-year Treasury yield right now up almost three basis points just above 3.555%. Um, and there's that 20-day I was talking about earlier. So the 20-day right now coming in <clears throat> at about 3.61, 3.62%. 50-day coming in at 3.66%. Notice the recent highs right at about that same area as well. You've got that yield uh, resistance, gap resistance, right at just below 370 so there's a lot going on between about 360 and let's call it about 367, 368. That's going to be a key area to try to negotiate back to the upside. If we fail, and this, you know, if you're looking bullishly and you're thinking, okay, April tends to be bullish, will it be bullish this year? One thing to watch, I think, is going to be this 10-year Treasury yield. If we fail at these moving averages, roll back over and head back toward that 330 level or better yet, goes below 330, I think that could be the catalyst for another move to the upside in the major indices. If we get through 365, 367 to the upside, we'll have to follow the major indices like the Dow and the S&P, which have been trending down to see if they continue. It's not normal in April to see a down month, but it happens. I mean, it's not a guarantee. And I'll show you some seasonal information here in just a minute. Um, looking at the economic calendar today, because a lot of times these economic reports can have a pretty good uh, impact on the bond market. And later today, we will be seeing the wholesale inventories. Actually, by the time you get this um, recorded video, the February wholesale inventories will be out. The expectation there is for a drop of two-tenths of 1%. January dropped four-tenths of 1%. That's not what I'd consider a big market mover. However, there are going to be some more housing reports out later this week, including two this morning. So the January Case-Shiller Home Price Index, I didn't see an estimate out for this month on that one. Um, at least my source didn't show it. Um, but it tends to go along with the January FHFA house price index, and that is forecasting a, a drop of uh, two-tenths of 1%. December on the FHFA house price index fell one-tenth of 1%. So fairly flat, but down slightly is what I would be expecting on these housing reports based on the consensus estimate. We'll see whether or not we vary much from that. Also out later this morning, March consumer confidence. February was 102.9. We are expecting that to drop to 101.0.
All right, moving on to the talking technically segment. I usually just like to pull up a daily chart on the S&P and on the NASDAQ 100. Take a look at what's going on. I think right now you could draw a couple lines on this chart. So here I would maybe be looking at this trend line. I mean, if you look at this, we haven't had a close over this trend line um, over the past seven weeks or so. We're right up against it. So if we get back up above that 4,014 level that I was talking about earlier, which is that 50-day moving average on the S&P 500, that would also break this downtrend line. Now, to the downside, what I'm watching, I've been talking about two different areas. That one right here at about 37.75, and then you've got this gap support. See that big gap up in November? We have yet to get all the way back down. We got close right here in December, but we haven't gotten back down. So I would say some are, are I'm sure, looking at the lows from October. I would be looking much more closely at this because if this is an uptrend, I would be looking at this high and this low. And then, of course, you got the uh, um, gap support just below it. So I'd give it just maybe just a little bit more room. But I'm going to say right around 37.50 to the downside. You can see that downtrend line there. So a break above 4,015. I mean, we could go back over here early March. But I think the big level, there's two big levels. I think your in intermediate level is right here at 4180 or so, closing back above that area. You could even go all the way back to where the Jackson Hole speech was. Um, that's where we sold off uh, back on August 26th. Um, that was at 4200. But the big level where you've got on the weekly chart, lower low, lower high, lower low, that's the big high and the low from a long-term perspective. So I'm drawing these lines in kind of as that's a key short-term breakout. This would be more intermediate term and you get back above 4,300. And I think that would be a really bullish long-term move um, to the downside. You can see these recent lows, the gap support I talked about that to me is more intermediate. I would say short-term probably 3,900, just the recent lows, but that would be more intermediate term. And then of course the big number, would be down at about 35, 20 or so. That's where we open. You could use 3491 as your intraday support. I don't believe we're going back down there. Some of you I know do. We'll see what happens. Um, I'll leave it at that. Moving on to the NASDAQ 100. Uh, this one looks much better. We do have a nice move up, more of a cup. So you can see all that end of the month February selling was replaced by some March buying. <clears throat> so we've seen it on the NASDAQ. We really haven't seen it on the Dow and the S&P. <clears throat> All right. Uh, so look at that. I'm looking at that as a cup off of an uptrend. A breakout would measure up about 1,000 points or so, which would be 13,750 roughly. And that would come in very close to this August high. So the measurement on a breakout of this cup and the handle that you see right now, that would measure us up to that August high on the NASDAQ. And with earnings season coming up, I believe that's the more likely path, not the guaranteed path, but I think that's the more likely path that we will see as we head into April and into the first half of May. All right, let's move on and take a look at the chart of the day. So charts don't have to be price charts. I'm going to give you a seasonality chart on the S&P 500. <clears throat> and so if you go, over, first of all, if you're looking at the, um, I can show you how you get, how you do this. Here you just go to seasonality and just type in, in this case, S&P 500. You'll come up with a five-year default. And all I do is grab the left side of this bar and just drag it back. It'll only go back 20 years. So over the last 20 years, during the month of April, you can see that the S&P 500 has gone up roughly four out of five years. So when that's when I talk about the path going forward, more likely to go up than down. This is one of the reasons why. Not the, the reason, but one of the reasons. History. History tells us April is a really good month. Most of the 
um, earnings months are pretty good. Um, normally, that would be uh, January, February, which is just kind of so-so. Um, but looking at April, May tend to be strong. July, August, well, maybe not quite so much. August, you get into the deep summer. And then October, November. That's where you, you tend to see a lot of the S&P 500 strength. Um, now, one other thing I'll show you here, because probably maybe you don't know it, but if you grab this and try and go back further, you can. So I can keep going past it. this 20 years. So when I was at five years or whatever, and I took this and I drug it back, it would only let me go out to 20. I can't, I'm trying to drag it and it won't let me go. So it only takes me to 2004 to 2023. So the bar itself will only go 20 years, but we can go back before 2004. I mean, if I drag it all the way back, I can go back to 1990. Now, the last one I showed you was 2004 to 2023. But what we can do is take this side and drag it back so that now we have 1990 to 2003. So the 2004 to 2023 we had in a chart, <clears throat> and we can also do 1990 to 2003 and get that in a chart. And a couple things stand out to me on this. Number one, April's still a good month during these 14 years. It's not the best, <clears throat> but it's about two out of three years that we go higher, and the average return is 1.4%. May during those 14 years, I mean, we go up seven out of 10 years and we average going up almost two percentage points for the month. Remember that go away in May adage? Well, you know, you'll be hearing it again in a month. Go away in May? No, that's not, that, that just sounds good. That's another perfect example of the media taking something and just running with it. It sounds great, it rhymes, it's really nice. Go away in May. It's not, actual i don't I, i've gone back to 1950 may is not a bad month you i don't know why anybody wants to go away in may actually right up through about the middle part early to middle part of june is good and then we go through a not a great period then we strengthen again late june early july and it's not really until about mid july that i would say you want to go away so you know Go fly in mid-July, I don't know, something like that. That has a ring to it. Look at July through September on those 14 years. Now, July in the last 20 years has actually been pretty strong, but the months around it haven't. Last 20 years, July's been pretty good. That's an earnings month. But look at the other three, June, August, September. August and September were bad, have been bad the last 20 months. and. If we go all the way back again and look at those 14 months there, look at August and September. Folks, that was through the 1990s. Remember the huge run-up in the 1990s? That includes that period. We had some really big months. Look at the fourth quarter. Tremendous fourth quarters. August, September was weak, even during some of the best market times. This is truly the go away period, mid July to toward the end of September. Go fly in mid July. That's my saying. Ignore the go away in May. Again, do your own research. Don't pay attention to the media. They'll just take something and run with it. Hey, and it sounds great. Get out of the market. They love to say that. Generates a lot more clicks on their headlines. Clickbait. All right, um, let's talk a little bit about earnings. Um, well, first, before we do that, let's talk a little bit about earnings beats. So if you go over to earnings beats, I just showed you that chart of the day. I'm starting to do one every day on the shows, whether it's here at Stock Charts or over at earnings beats. Um, but one thing that I, I uh, want to point out is if you'd like to have the, a single chart emailed to you every day, all you have to do is go over to earningsbeats.com, sign up, you can scroll down, sign up with your name and email address to our Earnings Beats Digest. Hit that subscribe button. Three times a week newsletter, usually out around 8.30 in the morning. So try to give you about an hour before the market opens. 
very quick and simple read. Two paragraphs in a chart usually. Could be a seasonality chart. Usually it's a price chart. You're normally focusing on things like relative strength, earnings, earnings gaps, price volume, candlesticks, trend lines, moving averages, those types of things. But make sure you check that out. All right. Um, industry groups. So I just wanted to go over some of the industry groups that have been very strong so far in 2023. First one I want to start off with here is the internet group. <clears throat> so we had a great January, early February. Then we kind of went through this law, especially in the second half of February. And then right back up, and we've established the right side of this cup now, and we're pulling back into possible handle. A closing breakout above 2,500 is what you should be watching for here. This cup measures down 400 points. So if you break above 2,500, you're looking at 2,900 as a measurement, 400 points above 2,500. That would take us back to the April of last year period in terms of where we would be on the internet group. So this is definitely a group that I've got on my radar. It's something I would keep an eye on. Um, another group that has been very strong has been the auto group. Auto's not quite as strong here in March, but you can see that was a huge run through mid-February. And one of the things I tell our members all the time, the first half of a quarter, calendar quarter, so January through March, first half, right through mid middle part of February, that tends to be the strongest. That's history. That's not just 2023. That's history. Second half of the quarter, not so good. It happened perfectly again back in the third quarter of last year. July to mid-August, look where we were. Mid-August to the end of September, back down. Now, it doesn't happen every quarter, as you can see on this chart, but it does happen quite frequently. You need to be aware of the tendency, and we'll see what happens going into the next quarter. April 1st through May 15th tends to be the most bullish time that actually gets started a little bit toward the end of March. Uh, let's take a look at a couple of others. How about travel and tourism? Another group, huge move. January, February took us all the way back to April of last year in terms of price action. Been trending lower, but watch to see. I mean, I'm seeing in this case, a nice little bullish wedge. So connecting the highs, something like that. Connecting the lows, something like that. We're squeezing. We break out of that bullish wedge. And I think we're back up off to the races again on travel and tourism. Uh, now you need to see that breakout first though. This is, it's a pattern that you expect to break to the upside. But unless you get it toward the bottom of the channel in terms of price, in other words, we went back down near this low, got back down to about 530, or excuse me, 630 or so, still need a couple percent to do that. We get back down to that area or maybe even just below, might be worth a gamble at that point. Otherwise, you're waiting for a breakout. Um, let's take a look at steel. I mean, even though materials have struggled, steel has been a great performer year to date. And actually, all the way back to the double bottom, it printed in September from the July, early July low. Double bottom, break out above this high. And we've been trending higher, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. Big problem here, higher prices, lower PPO, negative divergence. I would have expected at least short-term weakness down to the 50. We went a little bit above, below that. Can we get back up above the 20? That's going to be the big key. If you see this back up in the 550s, then I think steel perhaps could be ready for another run. Um, I've got to show you the uh, semiconductors. I mean, this has been probably the best group of the year. And this also coming off the October bottom. We've just been trending higher and higher. Group looks great. This is always a good group uh, to have on your side if you're a bull, because there are, is a lot of market cap in the semiconductor group. Here's software. Software actually just recently making a new closing breakout above that February high. This one looks pretty good. We just came off of a, a PPO centerline test. We're now strengthening. I think this looks pretty good. 
All right, moving on to earnings. Just wanted to point out that Walgreens Boots Alliance, WBA, um, reported today. Earlier, you can see up 1%. That's really not going to do a lot for it on this chart, unfortunately. Um, and then the other one that I wanted to show you was McCormick, MKC. This one has been moving down, but there is, I, I don't have the PPO up, but there is a positive divergence. And look at the AD line on MKC. They reported this morning, both these companies beat, by the way, and there's MKC up 4%, moving above the 50-day, challenging gap resistance at 78, and the price resistance right here at 77. Look, we're right in the middle of this range. A close above 78, I think, would be really bullish on MKC, given those AD lines and the positive divergence. All right, let's move on to the three you must see to wrap this thing up. Going to start off with um, Biontech, or Biontech, B-N-T-X. Been trending down. Yesterday came out with earnings. Earnings were a dollar ahead of expectations. Stock went down anyway. Big, big support down here, just below 120. Yesterday, we hit a low of 119.98. These lows need to hold. Watch this one. The next one I have for you, Carnival Cruise Lines, Carnival Corp. I don't know if you remember, but recently I was talking, I did a scooter report, and I said some of the highest scooters were in the cruise lines, but you got to be careful because scooters only look at the last five to six months, and that's why CCL had such a strong scooter. We got up in the low mid-90s. Now look at it. One month later, scooter scores back down at eight. The longer-term chart has caused this to roll back over. Last one, Boeing AD line remains strong, even though we've been pulling back. We're near this breakout level, support around 196. I think this is an area where we could see Boeing make a run, get back through those moving averages and challenge that 220 level. That's it for me. I appreciate everybody tuning in. Have a great day. I'll be back over at Earnings Beats on Wednesday for your next Trading Places Live. Simply go over to Earnings Beats and click on, actually, uh, that's the old way. We actually are streaming live. If you go to YouTube, uh, you should be able to pick up our show um, on our live stream. You'll also be able to come in from our Earnings Beats Digest if you are an Earnings Beats Digest subscriber. So make sure you tune in there. Anyhow, have a great day, everybody. Happy trading. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.